evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about angular velocity. So this is the beginning of circular motion. It's one of the most important topics in both paper one for the A-level and paper two. A circular motion is a different type of motion. So in SUVAT we have spoken before about linear motion. So we use SUVAT when an object is moving either this way or up and down. So left and right are up or down. It can move at a resultant between the left and right and the up and down, but we use SUVAT for this. Now, angular motion is all about things moving in a circle. Okay, I'm going to talk about this letter today called omega, and it's sort of a curly sort of W, and this here is the letter we use for angular velocity. And this is the velocity it takes to go round in a circle. And you've probably heard it of it before. Like we talk about RPM, revolutions per minute, or RPS, revolutions per second. So you have heard of it before, but probably not mathematically. So velocity, just to remind you, velocity, which is this one here, V, is distance over time or displacement over time. Okay. And angular velocity, what angular velocity is, is the angle, I'm going to write that as theta, over time. So it's the amount of angle you're sweeping out in a time, and this is why it's used for circular motion. So for example, if it takes one second to cover 360 degrees, okay, I would say my angular velocity was 360 degrees per second. But we don't really like working in, um, we don't tend to work in degrees when we're talking about angular, we're going to work in radians. Okay. So this angle here is normally in radians. Okay. So radians, just to make you aware, in 360 degrees, there is 2 pi rad, or 2 pi's worth of radians. In 180 degrees, okay, it is pi rad. And you can keep going on and so forth. Just to make you aware of how you convert between, to go from degrees oops, to radians, you divide by 180 and then you times by pi to go from radians to degrees oops, you divide by pi and times by 180 so an example of that just a conversion here if I had let's say I had 50 two degrees and I want that in radians I would divide that by 180 so 52 divided by 180 is 0 0.29 and then you times by pi here and I get 0 0.91 rad okay if I wanted to have um, 1.2 rad, and I wanted to put that into degrees, I would divide that by pi. So 1.2 divided by pi is 0.38, and then you times by 180, so times by 180, and that is 68.75 degrees. Okay, so that is how you convert degrees to radians. And when we're talking about angular velocity, we work in radians. Okay. So this idea of angular velocity is um, really important for circular motion. Now there's another formula that comes from this angular velocity, which is even more important that you start seeing in all sorts of things in paper two. So in magnetic fields, when we're talking about um, induced flux of rotating coil, etc. And it all comes from this idea of radians. Now, an object will do one full cycle, okay, in a certain time. And the time it takes to do one cycle, to go from this point back to this point, 
okay, is the time period, which is also related to the frequency. So, <clears throat> omega, the angle for a whole cycle is 2 pi, okay? And of course, the time it takes, t would equal the time period for one cycle. So if I put this to the formula, omega is 2 pi over t, where t is the time period. If we go back all the way back to waves, we know that frequency is 1 over t, and that there is 1 over t. So omega can also equal 2 pi f. And that is a really important um, equation that we use in um, circular motion. So this idea of angular velocity is basically, here's my object here, and it will move around my circle. So can you see this line that I'm drawing? It's not straight at all, it's curved. The angle, basically the velocity is going to move around the circle. I can draw it here a little bit better. It's the angle it's going to move around my circle at. And that is angular velocity. <laughs>